Hello. Testing, testing. <laughs> Still a couple of minutes early, so we'll just wait for some people to jump in before we get started. Oh, we got one. <laughs> Hi there. Just waiting until we, we get a few more people jumped on before we before we get cracking. <clears throat> Welcome to my kitchen. <laughs> We'll just wait a couple more minutes. I could do a dance or something. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful day. <laughs> it's a warm one. All right, we'll give it a we'll give it another minute or two, guys, and then we'll um, then we'll get cracking. A couple more starting to jump on. Hi there. Ready for some cooking? Oh, I hope so. That's why you're here. <laughs> well, there we go. We've got a few more jumping on. Hi there, everybody. Just leaving it at another minute or two um, until a few more jump in, and then we'll we'll get started. Great chance if you're if you're cooking along at home, just to try and get yourself set up with your ingredients off the ingredient list and getting your equipment ready just so everything's on hand and ready to rock and roll. Don't mind my, don't mind my dog, Harry. <laughs> He'll probably be looking for some prawns later on. Harry. <laughs> he thinks he's a, a guard dog, but he really just lick you to death. <laughs> All right. Well, it's after eleven thirty now, so we might as well get started. So. First of all, thank you all so much for tuning in to the first event. This is actually launching the Melton Lifelong Learning Festival. So it's a it's an honour to be a to be a part of this um, festival. Obviously, running a little bit different than you're used to in Melton. Um, damn you, COVID! But it's uh, a credit to the Melton City Council to 
not rest on their laurels and still be able to put out the program virtually, which is great and it seems to be what everyone is doing nowadays. So we're getting used to it now and I've, I've done a few of these sort of things now and it, it's great because you guys get a feel. Um, I'm welcoming you into my kitchen at home. I'm here in Ballarat at the moment, quite warm. I bet in Melton it's even hotter. But I guess that pairs well with what we're going to cook today, which is my prawn and mango salad with a chilli and lime dressing. So very summery dish and prawns and mango are just such an awesome combination. And around this time where we're starting to think about Christmas, I just think prawns um, are my go-to. I, I just love them so much. And this light salad is great for lunch and that's what we're doing, cooking lunch with, with me, Tim Bone, to, for you today. Um, before we get started, feel free to you utilise the, the chat and ask me any questions that you've got. I want this to be really interactive. I've got my beautiful wife, Abby, just standing off camera who's going to uh, read out any questions that you guys have got. It could be about MasterChef or the, the recipe in general or, or anything. I'm an open book, so just want to have some fun with you guys and, yeah, make it really interactive. Also on the chat too, because you guys have registered and are watching, you've got the chance to win a prize pack, which is um, you get a, a beautiful box of goodies from Organic Place, which is in Melton, and I've, I've met them before and they are amazing. And we're also going to throw in some Tim's Toasty merchandise. So we've got some stubby holders and some hats to give away as well. So all you have to do to be in the running to win those prize packs is to put your name and where you're from in the chat box. And then by the end of this session, we'll announce the winners and um, the guys at Melton City Council will catch up with you guys and be able to send those, organise those prize packs for you. So yeah, great little added bonus there. So we might as well get started. So again, want it to be interactive. If you're cooking along at home, just gonna take it nice and slow. This isn't an overly difficult recipe. It's just about having a bit of fun, keeping it simple and fresh, which is what I'm all about, and packed full of flavour. All right, so let's get started. And I'll have a bit of chat, a chat along the way. So maybe we'll just run through, for those that are playing at home, what ingredients we're working with. So obviously we've got mangoes, two mangoes. Mangoes are just amazing at the moment. I love them. And then we've got two avocados. And then we've got some garlic, a couple of long red chilies, um, a red onion. We're only going to need half of that. Some limes, beautiful limes. We've got uh, a tablespoon of sugar. That's for the dressing, but I'll explain that later. Some beautiful prawns. So I've got some raw prawn tails here that have been peeled, ready to rock and roll. And we've got some Meredith goat's cheese. In the recipe, I just said a small jar, but... I buy my Meredith's goat's cheese by the buckets. I just love it so much I could just eat it straight from the bucket. So we've got our Meredith's goat's cheese. We've got our gourmet salad mix. If you're using Rocket or anything like that, it's fine. No dramas. Then we've got some beautiful chives and some coriander. So we're sort of working coriander, chilli, lime, garlic. It, sort of that Southeast Asian influence, which is um, pairs really well for, for the summertime and those warmer months. So first job we need to do is to marinate our prawns. So I want you to take one of your long red chilies. Now I like a bit of spice, so I'm going to leave the seeds in, but if you can't really handle it too much, feel free to scrape the seeds out, but I'm gonna leave them in. Let's get spicy, why not? All right, so I'm just going to Chop the chilli up, just do some nice fine slices to start off. Beautiful. And then I'm just going to give it a give it a rough chop through. Thai food is one of my favourite cuisines. Not so much to cook, but I, I love to eat it. And my wife and I have uh, visited Thailand a couple of times and just these Southeast Asian flavours 
I just absolutely love them. All right, so we'll just run that through just to get a bit of a chop on that. Lovely. Is the chat chat working? Not quite sure. So we've got our chopped chili there. I've just got a, a mixing bowl. If you've just got a medium mixing bowl like that, we're just going to place that straight into the bowl. All right. That can just sit aside for a sec. Next, for our to marinate our prawns, we're going to need some garlic. I, pr I pretty much can't cook any recipe without garlic. I just absolutely love it. So we're going to need four cloves of garlic for this recipe. So I'm just going to break off four cloves. Lovely. And we'll just give them a bash. Yeah, so it's a real honour to be launching the Melton Lifelong Learning Festival. Um, I know it's been running for a little while now, and I've had a bit of a look at the program over the next few days. Is that there's some great um, classes that you guys can jump on, and it's so amazing that it's free and, yeah, informative. Great way to spend your afternoon just getting clued up on all, all sorts of different things. So, yeah, it's a fantastic initiative that Melton has. Beautiful. So we're just crushing the garlic just because it makes it easier to get the skins off. Last one. Beautiful. Now, I always like to use fresh garlic. The jar garlic just, just isn't the same. It's convenient, but it's just not the same. All right. Now we're just going to give the garlic a chop a through there. Beautiful. Hope everyone's doing really well today and staying cool today. This is one of the first real warm days we've had, so look after yourselves, stay hydrated. I don't mind the heat, but when it gets over 30, that's about that's about my limit. You can tell by my skin where I um, I burn pretty easily. I I get book burn on a full moon, so I've um, summer's my <laughs> some me and summer don't really get along. But there is something about summer and outdoor barbecues and salads and Christmas. Can't forget about Christmas. All right, so I'm just giving the garlic a chop through. doesn't have to be too, too fine. A few chunky bits are fine. All right. I just feel like you start any recipe with chilli and garlic, you know you're, you're onto something good. So that garlic can just go into the bowl with the chilli. Lovely. All right. Beautiful. Clean my hands off. Also into our bowl, we need the juice of one lime. So I'll just chop that in half and just squeeze all that beautiful juice out. Oh, just that smell already is amazing. All right. Then we'll add our prawns in. So I've got about 400 grams of prawns here. So this recipe will serve about four people. Um, so we're looking about 100 grams of prawns per person. All right, so bang them into the bowl. I'm just going to dry my hands off. 
And then we're just going to hit that with some salt and pepper. So I've just got some sea salt flakes, just a, a good sprinkle of sea salt flakes, and then some cracked black pepper. There we go. Nice one. Nathan comment, commented that it looks like Harry wants to be in the show. Yeah, my dog <laughs> Harry. I think he's yeah, he's just laying off camera, just looking all depressed here. <laughs> but he's he'll be looking for scraps later. Don't worry about that, Darren. <laughs> and we have people on from all over the city of Melton. Shout out to Kim from Hillside, Nathan from Melton, and Lucky from Burnside. Oh, fantastic! Well, thanks everyone for for listening and or watching. From Melton, beautiful city, and I'm, I bet you guys are all stoked that restrictions are finally eased. And I, I'm sure a lot of you might have had family members in Melbourne that you wouldn't have been able to see for a long time. So yeah, I think it's great for everyone around Victoria that we're finally able to get back out there and visit family and friends and get back to some sort of normality. It's been a it's been a rough few months, hasn't it? <laughs> and my heart goes out to South Australia now because they're starting to, yeah, go through what we did, but hopefully they can knock it on the head pretty quickly. All right. So check this out. So there is our prawn. So nice and simple. It's just chilli, garlic, lime juice, and a bit of salt and pepper. I'm going to chuck this in the fridge now just to let the flavours develop while we prepare everything else. So I'll just pop this in the fridge. Beautiful. So prawns are marinating in the fridge. They don't need long, literally 10 to 15 minutes, but that will be just enough time for us to get everything else organised and then we'll fry up the prawns. Next, we have to make the chilli and lime dressing for our salad. So I've got a little tip here. I've got this just clean, empty jar. What I'm going to do is add all the ingredients for the dressing into the jar and just give it a shake. Easy, salad dressing done. So for our salad dressing, again, chili. Now, remember, if you don't like it too spicy, you're more than welcome to take the seeds out. Or if you don't want to use all the chili, you could use half. Or It's really up to your own personal preference of if you can handle the heat or not. Hello to Radiance, Lynn and Diane, who have just joined us. Thanks for jumping on. Hi, Lynn and Diane. Thanks for watching. Um, now, Tim, Adeline from Taylor's Hill uh, says she can't wait to come to Ballarat to try some of your toasties. Oh, thanks, Adeline. Yeah, I would love to um, have you guys come to Ballarat and visit and try one of my toasties. Yeah, for those that don't know, um, well, I, I was a contestant on MasterChef in 2019 um, if you watch the show, and I ended up coming fourth. But um, if you watch the show, you would have known that whenever they asked me what my food dream was, it was always um, to start up my own gourmet toasted sandwich business. And since MasterChef, I have fulfilled my dream and I've um, started up Tim's Toasty. It's been running for about a, a year now and where I sell my gourmet toasties at local farmers markets and events around the Ballarat area. And um, so I, I was a I was a cooking teacher before MasterChef, but since MasterChef, I've gone out on my own and yeah, it's scary, but I've started my own business and it, it's, yeah, it's going really well. And I really couldn't be happier. I'm literally living my dream every day and I get to make toasties for a living. So yeah, I'm pretty, pretty stoked. So you can see that there's my, Tim's Toasty logo there. So, yeah, keep it up. If you've got me on Instagram or Facebook, Tim Bone Food, I'm always keeping everyone up to date where, where I'm going to be on the weekend. And, yeah, now that you guys can, can visit, I'd love to see you guys come and try Toasty. So for our dressing, I'm just, again, just chopping up another chilli. Just nice and fine. Pretty good, doesn't have to be too fine. All right, then I'm going to pop the chili into the jar. All right, lovely. 
doing your dressing in the jar just is so much easier. I'm just going to wash my hands so my fingers don't start burning. <laughs> we don't want that. All right, chilies in. Then also we need to add our tablespoon of sugar. So I've just got white sugar here, but any sugar would be fine. Bang that in. Beautiful. Then we want to hit that with the juice of two limes. So I'll just chop them in half. Daniel, Allison, and Trevor have just joined us. Daniel, Allison, and Trevor, hi guys. Thanks for thanks for tuning in. All right, so yeah, if you've just tuned in, we've got our prawns marinating in garlic, chili, and lime and salt and pepper. They're in the fridge at the moment. Now I'm just working on our chili and lime dressing for the salad. So in here, we've got our chopped chili and a tablespoon of sugar. Then we're going to go in with the juice of two limes. In we go. You could use a juicer, but I did remember, remember these old things. I love these. My mum got me this, and it, it's been great. But these, these limes don't actually have any pips in them, so they're right just to squeeze like that. Lovely. Get all the juice out. We've got a question from Trevor. How do you stop this? How do you stop the smell of garlic getting on your fingers? Oh, great question, Trevor. How do you stop the smell of garlic getting on your fingers? That's a tough one. <laughs> I think I'm just used to my fingers always smelling like garlic because I, I just love garlic so much. But I think just making sure you you wash your hands thoroughly. I, I'm sure there's some old wives' tales out there. If anyone's got any uh, hints or tips for Trevor, uh, yeah, let him know. But I'm not too sure. I just, I don't mind. <laughs> I've got Italian, um, I've got Italian heritage on my mum's side. So I think garlic's just... Um, the smell of garlic might just protrude from me all the time. <laughs> all right. Then to our dressing, we're just going to add two tablespoons of olive oil just to give it a little bit of body. So, Trevor what? thinks you should just get someone else to chop it. Oh, just, yeah, Trevor, that's a good point, Trevor. Just get someone else to chop the garlic and then your fingers will be just fine. I think that's what my wife says to me anyway. Mm. All right. So there we go. There's our dressing. So I'm going to pop the lid on. Make sure it's on tight so it doesn't go everywhere. And then just give that a good shake. Shake it like a Polaroid picture. All right. Excellent. And there you have it. That's your salad dressing ready to go. You could make that a day or two ahead and just have it in the fridge if you're having a dinner party just to save on prep time have that ready to go maybe i'll just give it a little little taste especially with these southeast asian flavors you're really looking for that balance so you want to balance the sourness with the sweetness and the saltiness i haven't actually added any salt in here so i just want to give it a little taste just to make sure it tastes all right That's great. You get that little hum from the chili, the nice zing from the, the lime, and that little bit of sweetness. Oh, it does have a little kick to it. <laughs> but it, it, that's really delicious, actually. I might just add just a tiny bit of salt. Again, just balancing out those flavours. Maybe a little bit of pepper. Team is inspired Diane. She's going to try this for dinner tonight. She thinks it's perfect weather for it. Yeah, Diane, fantastic. Yeah, definitely give this a go. If you're just watching at the moment, yeah. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to release the recipe this afternoon. But, yeah, if you're following along or writing it down old school as, as you're going along. But, yeah, you get the idea. It's just super simple. And you don't necessarily have to use these, these ingredients. You could just make whatever you're whatever you want, really, and just use this as a as a base. Sally would like to know if um, the recipe would work well with chicken, if you've got a prawn allergy or don't like seafood. Great idea, Sally. A chicken with this recipe would be amazing as well. Yeah, if you did some nice, you could almost marinate the chicken in the same stuff that we marinated the prawns in, grill that up, some nice tenderloins or, yeah, grilled chicken breast or chicken thighs. be perfect. Yum. But even from that, you could use fish, you could use uh, 
anything really. I can pitch a calamari or anything like that. It's just a versatile recipe. All right, I'm just going to wipe down. So let's just recap where we're up to. So our prawns are marinated. They're nearly ready to go. We've got our dressing ready. What I want to do now is just get the rest of our ingredients for the salad prepped before we grill our beautiful prawns. Thanks for jumping on, Carol. Welcome. Hi, Carol. Thanks for thanks for jumping on. And Lucy and Sally have given some tips in the chat box about how to get garlic smell off your fingers, so we'll have to check that out later. Oh, lovely. <laughs> thanks, guys. Tim, what are your favourite toasty flavours, Nathan would like to know? His is leftover meatloaf, cheese and sauce. Ooh, Nathan, so leftover meatloaf, cheese and sauce, that, is, that would be a tasty, tasty combo. I love it. Um, yeah, one of, one of my favourites, talking of leftovers, is when you've got leftover spaghetti bolognese sauce. I mean, come on, in a toasty, lots of cheese. That that's, that reminds me of my childhood. And I actually sell that um, one similar to that at the market, and I call it the, the mince vaughn. I, um, I try and come up with funny names for all, all my toasties that are either – either to do with music or movies because they're a couple of other big passions of mine as well. But, yeah, that's a great one. Um, what else? I, I love one. Uh, I do one called the Smashing Pumpkin, which is beautiful uh, fried bacon with maple syrup, um, feta cheese, caramelised onion and rocket. That's always, that's always a favourite as well. But I think since I started Tim's Toasties, I've made over 100, 100 different flavour combinations and always trying to come up with new and inventive ones. So, yeah, thanks for the tip. I'll have to have to try that meatball one. I'm doing one this weekend, which is always, always a hit, which is called the Parmageddon, which is like my chicken parma in a toasty, and that people always, always love that one. But one that or the old one, one or the one that sells probably the most is just my cheesy like Sunday morning, which is just the classic cheese toasty. But I, I put four different types of cheese in, but people just love that. And I think that's what's great about toasties. People just, it does, it reminds us of our childhood. It's comfort food and it just makes us feel good. I love it. All right, so let's get started on our other ingredients. So we've got our red onion here. So I only need half of it. We'll put half later for another recipe. Just chop both the ends off. Peel the skin off. And get rid of the skin. And all I want is some nice thin slices of our red onion. Lovely. Diane would like to know what fish you recommend um, if you were to use fish in this recipe that won't fall apart. Oh, Diane, good. Good question. So Diane asked what fish she would recommend to go with this recipe so it wouldn't fall apart. I almost think sometimes a nice flaky, imagine cooking some uh, salmon and then just flaking that over the top. That'd be great. But if you want it to stay together, I'm using more of a hearty fish like a barramundi would be great because that's a bit more hearty and you could almost have some great barramundi fillets just sitting on top. How good would that be? Crispy barramundi skin. I think that would be good because that's more of a hardier, firm fish. Um, yeah, so if you're looking, if you talk to your fishmonger and ask them for more of a, a firm fish that won't flake apart, you'd be onto a winner with that one. But great idea. All right, so we've got our red onion. I'm just going to sit that aside. Then we've got our mangoes. I mean, come on, mango season. Does it get any better than that? Yum, yum. So I'm just going to chop the cheeks off the mango. All right. Now, we're not going to use that, but don't waste that. I mean, off camera, when I'm done, I'm going to, like, just chew on that because I, I love that and you don't want to waste that. So I'll just sit that aside for, for later. And we're using two mangoes, so chop the other two cheeks off the other mango. Would snapper work, Tim? Daniel wants to know. Snapper, snapper would be um, brilliant for this recipe too. Yeah, I, I love cooking with snapper. And be, because I'm in Ballarat, I don't cook with a, a lot of a lot of fish. And that was one of my um, 
probably one of my weaknesses on MasterChef because we're from Ballarat. We're not we're not on the coast. I, I don't cook with a lot of seafood. We do have a beautiful um, Ballarat Seafoods, which sells great fresh and, um, seafood, but it's something that I don't cook with a lot. But snap is something I love cooking snapper whole and stuffing it with similar ingredients, Southeast Asian ingredients. But, yeah, snapper would be amazing as well. Good one. All right. So my tip on getting – we want some nice cubes of mango. I'm sure most of you have seen this before, but just running your knife down one way. Careful not to chop all the way through the mango. And then I love doing this. Pop it out. And then you've got beautiful cubes of fresh mango. I, I can't resist, guys. I can't resist. Oh, wow. That just tastes like summer. I love it. And then you can literally just pop these beautiful cubes out. Use your knife. Pop them out. Lovely. And I'll just repeat that with the other cheeks. Pop those out. Beautiful. It's one of the great things about summer is just all those summer fruits that come on. I'm obsessed with stone fruits and nectarines and peaches. You could use nectarines or peaches in a recipe or a salad like this too. I think just the idea, because my, my style of cooking is, isn't too complicated. It's just about taking ingredients and just getting as much flavour out of them as you can. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. We're just using beautiful produce and letting it speak for itself. And just trying to come up with some different combinations. I mean, your salads don't have to be the old iceberg lettuce, tomato with a bit of grated cheese on top. I mean, yeah, this is just about thinking outside the box. And if you pulled this out at your next dinner party, you would wow your friends and family. Because Christmas catch-ups are coming up and everyone gets a bit over the ham and turkey and stuff. But if you pull out something like this, you'd be sure to impress just a couple of other hellos, um, Tim, Carolina, and we have two Janines with us today. Carolina and two Janines. Hi there, ladies. Hope you're well. All right, we're up to our last cheek here. Pop those out. Lovely. I'm going to have to have another bit. Sorry, but there'll be enough. All right. Now I'm just going to move our mango over to one side. Next up, we've got our avocado. So I've got two avocados here. So I'm just going to run my knife carefully. Be careful playing at home. If any kids are, oh, kids are at school, aren't they? <laughs> Split that apart. Carefully take the seed out. Do that with the other one. Just be very careful. All right. And then I just need a spoon. And we're just going to just scoop the flesh out. One. Two. Trevor says he can see why you need so much mango. Did you eat most of it? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Trevor, it's always um, always good to have an extra mango on hand for the, um, for the chef to, to taste test along the way. <laughs> what dishes could you put this salad with? Yeah, this this salad, I think that it would be great at a, at a barbecue. Imagine... You've got a nice outdoor area, beautiful summer's night, sitting this in the middle with some beautiful grilled grilled meats or anything around the side. It'd be a great addition to your to your next barbecue. Um, I think 
Yeah, or having having this and then doing a, a nice, like we were talking before with the fish, doing like a whole whole grilled snapper on the barbie, stuff it with some fresh herbs and some lemon. That would be amazing. Just sit that on a board, have this salad there as well. That would be a... Oh, that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that <laughs> at my next dinner party. That would be delicious. All right, then with our avocado that I've just scooped out, just want to get some nice slices of that. Just nice thin slices. Beautiful. These are quite ripe, these avocados, which is great. I mean, that's when they when they taste their best. They're just a bit mushy. But the avocados, it's all cooking's all about textures too, and the avocados are going to add a beautiful creaminess to it to this dish. Chop up this other one. Beautiful. Wash my hands again. All right, so that's pretty. Oh, we've just got to chop. We might chop our herbs at the end, just because when you're chopping, when you're using fresh herbs, you want to use, you don't want to chop them until right at the last second because you want them to be as fresh and vi and vibrant as you can. Because if you if I chop them now and being such a warm day, they would start to wilt and go yeah go a bit yucky within minutes. All right. So, at, so you can see there we've got our mango, our red onion sliced, and our avocado as well. So let's start thinking about our prawns. What I might, what we can do, yeah, let, let's grill our prawns. So, guys, so I don't have to turn my back to you. My stove's over here. I've got this little induction cooker. But if you're cooking at home and you want to follow along, just take your phone or your computer or whatever where you can see. So I'm just going to turn and my induction cooker on. Now you want this on a medium high heat, all right? So I'm just gonna let that heat up. Beautiful, I'll just grab the prawns out of the fridge. All right, so if you didn't see at the start, there's our beautiful prawns marinated in the chili, garlic, lime dressing, and a bit of salt and pepper. Simple. I don't want to overpower the, the flavor of the prawns because at the end of the day, they're the hero. All right. I might just hit our pan with a little bit of olive oil just so they don't stick. Now, the trick with these prawns is I don't want to overcook them. Prawns are so easy to overcook, and I think a lot of people have trouble with that because they, well, obviously, you don't want to eat raw prawns, but an overcooked prawn isn't great either. So it's just finding that delicate balance, and they really only need a couple of minutes either side. That's all. Let's just give this a test, see if we get, we want this, Yep, we're getting that nice sizzle on there, which is great. So we'll pop them on there. Oh, let's just... Hi. If only YouTube had smell -o vision this smells so good already. Try and space them out so that they're not too crowded. So they're just sizzling away. I'm just watching them, <laughs> just admiring. <laughs> they won't take long at all. I just love grilled corns like this. I, Often on a, on a Friday night, I'll just grill some prawns like this, some crusty bread, maybe fry up some chorizo as well, and 
that's um, maybe a glass, a cheeky glass of red or something. That's a that's a good price for me. So you can see there. You can't. Oh, you you can sort of see from there, but you can see they're starting to change colour, which is a good sign. Might leave them for another thirty seconds, and then we'll give them a flip. I just really don't want to overcook these bad boys. Hope everyone's doing okay out there. Got lots watching now, which is great. All right, let's have a look. Yeah, beautiful. All right, let's let's give them a flip now. So I'm just going to turn all of these over. Oh, some of them are getting some good caramelisation, which is great because that's that's flavour. Yum, yum. This is just giving me a flashback. Um, I grew up in the little country town of Nil on a farm and we had dams and just um, just reminding me of going yabbing at, at Christmas time and in the summer months. Um, yeah, lots of fond memories. Throwing the nets in and catching some yabbies. Love it. So they're literally only going to need another minute on this side. Because what people don't realise, when you when you take something off, off the grill, whether it's a steak, prawns, fish, it's going to continue to cook even, even on a plate while you've got to set, set aside. The residual heat will continue to cook through. So it's almost better to undercook, if, if that makes sense, just a little bit, because that residual heat will cook it through and it'll be perfect. That's why they talk about the importance of resting a steak because it will continue to cook when you take it off the grill. All right. Some of these in the middle are looking brilliant. Janine would like to know if there's a difference between using green or tiger prawns. So when when I say green prawns, that just means that just means that they're raw. So if if they're not green, they they've already been cooked um, before you before you buy them. Um, you can buy green tiger prawns as well, and tiger prawns are, are beautiful as well. All right, I'm happy with these. Let's get these off. Smells so good. Yum. Beautiful. So there you guys, can you get a shot of the beautiful prawns there? coming closer see so you've got oh, some no. nice nice color on them but they're only only just cooked which is which is what you want i'm just going to get this pan out of the way guys so i've got a bit more room just bear with me for two seconds get this out of the way kim says they look delicious <laughs> yeah i she wishes she could taste one. Oh. And Nathan would like to know the marinade that you use for the prawns, would that be good with oysters? The marinade oh, for the prawns. Like the marinade you use. Yeah, you could spoon that on and and if you're doing like a oysters yeah. Kilpatrick, you know, this this dressing, if you spoon that over the so this was just your lime juice, bit of sugar, chili, and a bit of salt and pepper and olive oil. Yeah, that spooned yeah. over some Fresh oysters would be delicious. Great idea. All right, let's think about building this 
salad now. So I've got this platter board. I call it my surfboard. I love it. I just love serving things on boards. I'm very much – Jamie Oliver is one of my heroes and he just puts everything on a board. So I, I take a leaf out of his book. So I'm just going to serve this because I just love the idea at a dinner party, just plonking this in the middle of the table and let everyone just serve, serve themselves. All right, so first what we need to do, get my surfboard there. So we've got our gourmet salad mix. I just bought this from my green grocer this morning. Grab that out. Chuck that into a bowl first. Just because what I want to do is just hit these salad leaves just with a bit of olive oil just to just to pip them up a little bit, just make them make them vibrant instead of just having them having them dry. So just a little bit of olive oil, not too much. Even a little bit of salt and pepper. Like I said, my cooking's simple, but it's just about getting as much bang for your bucket out of flavour as you can. So even giving your Lettuce leaves a little season really does make a difference. Bit of pepper. All right. Then we're just going to give that a little little toss, and then all the lettuce leaves are suddenly transformed, and they're all got that beautiful gloss to them. Nice one. All right. I want to do this so you guys can see. Move my surfboard over there. All right. So first, on your beautiful platter or whatever you want to serve it on, get some of your lettuce leaves and just run them along the middle. Now it's the fun part. This is what I love, the, the plating up and trying to make it look beautiful and impress your, impress your friends and family. Oh, MasterChef, I... I always had this silly habit of always being being rushed right at the last second when they'd start to count down 10, 9, 8. I would, every time I'd be like, no, I'm going to be organised. I'm going to give myself a few minutes to plate up. But it never happened. It was always I was plating up right to the last second and ended up just throwing stuff on the plate, which wasn't ideal. But, yeah, I just couldn't couldn't break that habit. <laughs> Diane said it's good to hear that Barbie's joining in. Yes, the baby's awake. Ah, uh, yes, you you guys might um, hear little Toby in the background. Um, yeah, some of you might know my wife and I. Have, oh, there he is again. He's just we've recently had a baby, um, little boy Toby. So he's three months now. So wow, that's gone. That's gone fast. But yeah, we couldn't be happier. For those who watch the show, you'll you'll know um, my wife and I have been wanting a baby for a few years now, and it's actually our four-year four wedding anniversary today. So uh, he's been a long time coming, but we couldn't be happier that he's finally here and he's just he's just amazing. Yeah, and he's sleeping pretty well and getting to that three-month stage now, so he's getting lots of beautiful smiles and, yeah, we're just, just over the moon. Yeah, it's amazing. All right, so we've got our beautiful layer of lettuce on there. Next, we might just hit it with some of our red onion. Hi, Lucy. Welcome. She hasn't been able to access the chat function, um, but we know that you're there, Lucy, so thanks for tuning in. Oh, uh, hi, she, Lucy. She said she loves the colours and the textures in this salad. The colour, yeah. Colours and textures is just makes such a difference and all the different colours on this really just pop and, yeah, you know... When you've got all these different colours, you know it's going to taste good, but if it looks good too, you, you're really going to impress your friends. But it comes down to flavour at the end of the day at the day too. So, yeah, great point with the textures too. All right. So we've got our onion on there. Let's go on with our beautiful mango. Now I'm getting excited. All right. So you could have all the all this sort of prepped, but I probably wouldn't plate it until you're about to serve it because if you pop this in the fridge and put a wrap on it and stuff, it's just going to lose its its vibrancy. And I definitely wouldn't dress it until the last second either. So our beautiful mango goes on. 
I'm getting lots of nice happy anniversary messages. Thanks, everybody. Oh, thank you, everybody. <laughs> I'm a bit nervous because we're going out for tea tonight and it'll be the first first night out um, without without Toby. So we're only going to be gone for a couple of hours and our mo the mother-in-law's coming over to, to watch him and he'll probably be asleep anyway. But, yeah, it's often that first time where you're away from bubs, it's, yeah, quite nerve-wracking. All right, so mangoes on. Then we'll go on with some of our beautiful avocado slices Nathan's got a bit of board envy. Bit of board envy? Oh, where, where did I get this board? You want me that for my birthday? Is it a salt and pepper one? I think? Yeah, I think this is a salt and pepper brand board, but, um, yeah, I, I love big, bold boards like this. We do our um, antipasto platters or char charcuterie um, boards on this, and it, it's great. All right, mango slices go on. Looking good. Sorry, guys, this is just making me so happy. Just bear with me. All right. And I've got terrible creamy avocado hands, so I'll just give them a wash. Get this out of the way. Now I'm back. <laughs> All right. So... There's that. What else do we need to put on there? We need to, oh, our goat's cheese. Now, I know a lot of people say putting cheese with seafood is sacrilegious and you shouldn't do it, but I think using this beautiful marinated goat's cheese really works well with the prawns. I've, I've done a similar dish like this before and it really does, does work. It adds that little bit of zing from the goat's cheese and another added layer of creaminess. So I'm literally... And I'm just obsessed with Meredith's goat's cheese. I literally put it on everything. I do lots of toasties with the Meredith's goat's cheese in it. That's why I buy it by the, by the bucket now. <laughs> so I'm just going to put a few cubes on there, maybe three or four cubes. Again, it adds another nice colour too. The white just really pops on there as well. We'll go one more. Why not? Lovely. Kim says you eat with your eyes before your mouth, so presentation definitely matters. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that, Kim. You do it with your eyes before before your mouth, so I think presentation really does make a difference, and just taking that little bit of extra time to try and make it look beautiful on the plate really does make a difference. All right, now I'm excited, so we're going to go on with some of our, or all of our beautiful grilled prawns. So they've cooled down a little bit now. You probably don't want to eat this with the prawns too hot. You almost want them at room temperature because you don't want to melt or wilt anything from the if the prawns are too hot. Oh, boy. Yum. Oh. I'm so excited for lunch now. <laughs> I don't think Abby and I are going to be able to Eat Lucky. this all ourselves. Lucky teas at eight o'clock. Yeah, and see the all these all these beautiful juicy those juices and those bits of crunchy garlic and chili. Don't waste those. Chuck them on. That's flavour. All right. What am I missing? Oh, the the fresh herbs. I'll just grab another board. So we've got our coriander, and coriander is a very contentious issue in this household because I love it, but my wife, Abby, um, can't stand it. So I'm, I'm going to put it on just for aesthetic sake, but um, then I'll probably have to take it off when, when we have this for lunch. But just one thing to be careful, coriander can be quite sandy. So just I'm just going to rip off, I don't know, just a, some of the leaves off the top, just give that a twist. So just a, a good handful and I'm just going to give that a little little rinse because I don't want any of that grit. Because sometimes when you go places and they don't wash the coriander, you can really tell the difference, and it's a bit unpleasant. So I'll just give that a little little rinse. Will another cheese work apart from goat's cheese? Nathan would like to know. Um, another goat's cheese. Oh, another cheese besides goat's cheese. 
I think any any cow's milk feta cheese would be nice. Something you probably want more of a more of a softer yeah. softer cheese. If you're if you're game, I think even a like a, a mild blue cheese just crumbled on top would be really nice as well. I think that would add a add a, add a good bite to it. But blue cheese isn't for everyone. But I, I love it. I would I would definitely give that a go. All right, I might just dry this coriander. Yeah, but I definitely think um, a softer a softer cheese would be the go with a dish like this. All right, then we'll just plonk some of this coriander just around. Dave's got a good question. Mm -hmm. So he's wondering if you can add plain goat's cheese to the rest of the oil in the tub just to not waste the flavoured oil. So I'm guessing he means once you've used all that. Oh, yeah, where's the... Yeah, yeah. definitely. Do not waste that oil. It's yeah, this, this oil in here is liquid gold. Do not, yeah, do not waste that. You could just continue to top that up. Or I'll, I'll often use it instead of olive oil. I'll just use this because it's got the beautiful flavour, the peppercorns and the goat's cheese, and they put thyme, thyme leaves in there as well. So, yeah, definitely do not waste that. That is liquid gold. Great point. All right, some of our coriander around there. I won't put too much on for the for Abby's sake, but you get the idea. You can put as much or as little or leave it off if you like. Then we've got some beautiful chives. Look at these. They're so fresh. What I want to do is just get a little bit and just do some finely chopped chives. I just love chives. All right, just chop a few of those up. You don't need too many. That's probably only a couple of tablespoons, but just enough to sprinkle all over the top. Delicious. We can go back in my jar. What I might do is just give it, because I want to season the, the avocado as well and the mango, so just a, another hit of cracked pepper. Not too much because you've already got a lot of flavour in those prawns. And maybe just one last little sprinkle of sea salt flakes. On there. All right. I've made a right mess. George Columbaris would be very angry at me right now. <laughs> get that out of the way. Just get tidied up. Just while I'm wiping down, does anyone else have any other questions or anything? Don't be shy. No such thing as a silly question, just, just silly answers. <laughs> All right. Everyone, if you haven't let us know where you're from, um, put your name and where you're from in the chat box so that Tim can announce the prize winners. Oh, yeah, did you hear that? So if you want to be in the running to win the prize, pop your name and where you're from in the chat box and because some might have jumped on late. So if you put your name and where you're from in the chat box, we're going to be literally in the next couple of minutes drawing who's going to win those prize packs of Beautiful goodies from Organic Place and some of my Tim's Toasty merchandise. So we've got Tim's Toasty hats and stubby holders. So yeah, get it. Pop your name in. You got to be got to be in it to win it, don't you? <laughs> All right. So we've got our beautiful dressing. This is the last thing. So if you're making this at home, this is something that you want to do at the last second. <laughs> Muscles. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to be able to get that off. Daniel wants to know if you can replace the avocado and the mango for other fruits. 
Absolutely. This this is just um, this is just a base to give you some ideas. But if you don't like mango or avocado, I would, I think um, what else could work? I think pear would be really nice, or even peaches or or nectarines. I think or orange orange segments. Mm. Yeah, you could um, sprinkle some passion fruit pop over the top. It's really just about getting getting creative and coming up with your own own flavor combinations and trying to suit the recipe um, to your own tastes and and what you like to eat for sure. But yeah, just use this as a base and yeah, run with it where you want to. For sure. We've got some lovely comments, Tim. So Kim Kim says that the serving platter looks amazing. Anyone lucky enough to eat this would be so happy. Enjoy. We oh. will. Thanks, Kim. Thanks, Kim. And Nathan um, said he's on his way. Oh, Nathan. All right. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll give you my address. You'll can... be there in an hour. <laughs> Um, Radiance is cooking along. Good job, Radiance, and she's really looking forward to her lunch today. Oh, fantastic. Good job, Radiance. I hope I didn't go too fast or uh, make anything too confusing for you, but, yeah, I hope, hope, you, hope you enjoy it. So the last flourish is some of this beautiful dressing. So literally just spoon some of this over the top. This is just going to finish the salad off beautifully and add that bit of zing that this dish really needs. What a masterpiece. Wow. I've actually um, impressed myself here. <laughs> <laughs> but you can just tell, guys, if you made this and um, put it on the table at your next dinner party, you would be the envy of all your friends. So that, that amount of dressing is pretty perfect for this. There we go. So, guys, there you have it, my finished product, my prawn and mango salad with chilli and lime dressing. Beautiful for the summertime and the warmer days like today. Keep it nice and fresh. Give it a go. At, you could even grill these, grill these prawns on, on the barbie. That'd be brilliant. Mm. You could just have everything ready to go. Grill the prawns on the on your barbie outside, and then just build her up. And like I said, get a long board like this or a nice platter, and chuck this on the table. And yeah, you'll be you'll be the hero at your next at your next dinner party. So while we wait for the winners of the prize pack to be announced, Diane has another question. She wants to know if you could use some of the oil from the goat's cheese on the leaves rather than plain olive oil. Yes, definitely. Absolutely. And in hindsight, Diane, that, that's what I should have done. I just um, got a bit confused or a bit distracted. But, yeah, definitely use that marinated um, olive oil from the ghost cheese on the leaves. Definitely. Yeah. I'm silly. I'm, I'm kicking myself. I didn't do it. <laughs> Daniel says they've eaten theirs already. Lucy says it looks delicious. And Carolina says a big thank you. Oh, well, thank you, everybody. I mean, I really appreciate it. Uh, you guys taking an hour out of your busy schedules to, to tune in today and, and be a part of the, the Melton Lifelong Festival, uh, Lifelong Learning Festival. It's a great initiative and for you guys to support support it going online really means a lot, not only to me, but to everyone that's organised the festival and they've been working so hard behind the scenes to get all this together and get everything organised and, yeah, hats off to them. And maybe I'll have to come down to Melton Melton soon and bring my bring my Tim's Toasty um, set up at one of your local farmers markets and yeah check out check out Melton that'd be great I did come there last year and did a cooking demo at the new community centre that was open last year and that was a magnificent facility um yeah I'd love to come down there again oh and uh, I don't know if I can reveal it yet but stay tuned I might be in Melton coming in the new year for a, a very special event but. I don't know if I, I might get in trouble if I let the cat out of the bag, but yeah, keep an eye out. I'll be coming your way in the next in the next few months. There you go. <laughs> Leave you on a, a cliffhanger. All right, ready for the winners? Oh, all right. Drum We're roll. Ready for the winners? Drum roll. Nathan from Melton. Nathan from Melton, congratulations, mate. You are one of the winners of the Organic Place and Tim's Toasty Merchandise Prize Packs. Well done, buddy. Kim from Hillside. Kim from Hillside. Well done. Beautiful. 
Love your work. Thanks again for least watching. And lucky last, Janine Schmidt from Caroline Springs. Lucky last, Jeme Janine. Janine Schmidt from Caroline Springs. Well done. <laughs> you. So you three are the, can you just say the names again? We've got Nathan. Nathan Kim and Janine from Nathan, Caroline Nathan, Kim and Janine from Caroline Springs. Well done, guys. Um, so those who missed out, I, I apologise. But um, I do sell my merchandise at um, my markets as well. So if you're yeah, looking for a road trip to Ballarat one weekend, come and say good day. And if you do come, yeah, make sure you say good day and say you watched um, the YouTube show for the Melton Lifelong Learning Festival. But Here's an email address they have to email for ooh. to claim their prize. Okay, so those three competition winners, if you've got a pen or a paper, if you can contact this email address, email address um, to claim your prize. So the email address is mld, mld at melton.vic.gov.au. So that's mld at melton.vic.gov.au. So if you shoot them an email and just let them know who you are and um, that you're just claiming your prize for um, Tim's cooking session, you'll um, yeah, be able to organise getting your prize. Beautiful. All right, guys, I'm going to sign off because I am hungry and I need to go and demolish this beautiful salad now. But um, thanks again to everyone that um, tuned in. It really means a lot to me and means a lot to those that are running the Melton Lifelong Learning Festival as well. Keep an eye out uh, for the other – or check out the program for what other classes are going on the next few days and, yeah, support, support your local town and, yeah, Thanks very much, and we'll hope to see you all soon in Ballarat or me in Melton. Good on you guys. Thank you.